OK, so we've been seeing how we can actually compute the determinant, an important number associated with a square matrix. But now we're going to see that, in fact, if we use row operations, we can make that, that determinant computing process actually really easy. Now, when we perform row operations, the question is, how does that impact our final answer on the determinant? Well, to experiment with that a little bit, let's take a look at a simple example, try different row operations, and see the effect it has on taking a determinant. So here's a two by two matrix I want us to consider. I'm going to call it A. It has entries 5, 6, 1, 2. And I just want to play around with the rows and see what, in fact, happens. So for example, to start off first, let's just simply, first of all, find the determinant of this matrix. So 5, 6, 1, 2. What's the determinant? Well, I take, it's 2 by 2, so it's really easy. I just take 5 times 2, which is 10. Subtract off uh, 1 times 6, which is 6. And so I see 10 minus 6, which is 4. OK, so we know the determinant is 4. There's our starting point. Now let's play around and see what impact the playing has on the determinant. The first thing I think we should do is just take these uh, two rows and switch them. So let's interchange two rows and see what happens. So in this case, if we interchange two rows, I would have 1, 2, 5, 6. Do you see how I just interchange these two rows? Whoop, and I get this. Well, what's the determinant? Well, it's 1 times 6, which is 6, minus 5 times 2, which is 10. And so 6 minus 10 is negative 4. So I get the exact same answer, but now I get the opposite. I have a negative sign in front. And that's, that's actually indicating a much more general principle. Whenever I interchange two rows, I will have a negative 1 factor in front of the original determinant. So if you flop, if you, um, flop or interchange two rows, that introduces a negative uh, sign in front. Notice if I were to do it again, by the way, then I'd get back to the original matrix, and two negative signs would actually equal a positive sign. i get back to 4. So if I were to interchange twice, which would do nothing, i get back to the original answer. Check. OK, well, let's try something different now. What if we take a row and multiply it through by a, a number? For example, let's take row 2 and multiply it through by the number 3. Just for instance. So I start with the original uh, matrix. I do nothing in the first row, 5, 6. But now in row 2, I'm just going to multiply every entry by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, one time, uh, 3 times 2 is 6. OK. So nothing in the first row. Second row is multiplied by 3. What's the determinant here? Well, I see 5 times 6, which is 30, minus uh, 6 times 3, which is 18. And what is uh, 30 minus 18? Well, we see it is 12. Now, how does 12 relate to 4? Well, notice it's actually 3 times 4. And notice that's the exact same number that we multiplied that, that row by. So what's the impact? The impact is if we take any one row and multiply the entire row through by a particular constant, then that constant has got to be a multiple in the new determinant that we're computing. So take the old determinant, multiply it by 3, if you're going to look at the matrix formed by taking a row and multiplying it by 3. Cool. Let's try just for, one, just for, just for fun. A one last example. What I want to do is I want to look at a combination of rows. So let's take uh, row 1 and replace it by row 1 minus 5 times row 2. So I'm going to look at a linear combination of the rows, combine them, 5 times uh, row 2, and I'm going to take row 1 and subtract off 5 times row 2, and I'm going to take that linear combination and place it into row 1. So in row 2, I'm not going to do anything. So I'm going to keep the 1 and the 2 here. But now in row 1, it's going to get a little bit funky. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to take this minus 5 times this. So 5 minus 5 times 1 is 5 minus 5 is 0. And here I'm going to take 6 minus 5 times 2. That's 6 minus 10, which is negative 4. So I have a totally new matrix here, which was formed by taking a linear combination of the rows and placing that in the 
in the first row. Now, what's the determinant? Well, this is actually really easy to do because I have a zero. We love zeros because this is going to be zero. Zero times two is zero minus negative four times one is negative four. And negative, negative is a positive. This is just four. I see that the determinant didn't change at all. So if I take a particular row and I replace it with itself plus or minus some other row, then in fact the determinant doesn't change. So I want to summarize these little um, examples by noticing that uh, if I interchange two rows, then in fact the uh, effect on the determinant is that the sign will change, and that's what we saw here. If instead I multiply a particular row by a constant, then in fact I take the determinant and multiply it by that same constant. And so there we have that. And then the last little example that we saw, which was a more elaborate one, I add a multiple of one row, or subtract a multiple of one row, to another row and place it in that other row, then in fact there's no change in the determinant as we've seen here. So you can see what happens if we perform row operations on a matrix and compute its determinant. And we, it, you have to kind of think about these things. These are a little bit tricky, but this example, I hope, illustrates the, the idea. Hey, wait, 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 turn off the lights. Wait a second, wait a second. Hey, I want to do another example. What are you going? Don't, just, please. I paid the electric bill. I want the lights on. OK, let's now take a look at an example where we can actually see this idea in action. Now, in a 3 by 3 matrix, Finding the determinants there, that's pretty, pretty tricky business, unless we're lucky. If the matrix were to be triangular, either upper triangular or lower triangular, notice that then the determinant is really easy, because all we have to do is literally just multiply the entries along the diagonal. Because if we expand, for example, along the top, then I'm going to get x times the determinant of this, which is just this times that, and 0. And then 0 is every place else. So we just add and subtract zeros. And similarly here, if we expand along this uh, particular column, then I'll have x times the determinant of this, which is just yz minus 0. And then this is going to be a minus 0 times stuff and minus uh, plus 0 times stuff. That's all 0. So basically, upper lower triangular matrices, we love them because taking the determinants just involves us multiplying the diagonal. But in our everyday lives, sadly, the matrices aren't necessarily going to be uh, triangular. But we could use these row operations to massage this matrix into another matrix where we can find the determinant of that much easier. And as long as we keep track of any weird thing we do, we could actually produce the correct answer. So let's check this out for ourselves and hope to get it into one of these forms. So, uh, where do you begin a journey to the determinant? OK. Well, I look at this, and I'll tell you what I see. So I'm just going to be honest with you. I said to myself, you know what? If I add these two rows, notice that this would give me a 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0. This is great. I can get a whole bunch of zeros there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to find the determinant of this matrix. I'm not going to touch the first row at all. Can't touch this. No, 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 no. And now I'm just going to add these two together, and I can either put that sum, that combination, in the second row or the third row, whatever I want. I'm going to put it in the third row because I hate negative signs. They're going to go away. So I'm basically going to keep the second row the way it is. And then I'm going to take this this third row and replace it by the sum of these two. Now we've already seen that if you do a combination like that, it's not going to change the determinant. Now, there's an important point here. The matrix is going to change, but the determinant is not. And that's all I'm figuring out here. Remember, this denotes determinant. So if I just now add 2 plus negative 2 is 0, 3 plus negative 3 is 0, uh, negative 1 plus 6 is 5. So there I have it. And actually, I look at this and say, you know what? This is almost uh, a triangular matrix. In fact, it almost looks like this. This is what I'm going to now shoot for. I've got the bottom row looking really, really good. All I've got to do is, is flip these two. So now, if I flip two rows, do you remember what happens? If we flip two rows, we actually introduce a negative sign. So in fact, this equals, now I'm going to flip the rows, which means I'm going to put the negative sign right in front of that determinant. And now I'm going to flip. 
2, 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 4, 0, 0, 5. Awesome. Now, it is a triangular matrix. So I can just look at this thing and figure out what the determinant is. It's literally going to be the product of the diagonal entries, which in this case, now don't forget that negative sign. Boy, if you were to drop that, after all that great work, that would be so sad. So you have a negative sign, and the determinant of this is going to be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 5, which is 10 times 2, which is 20, so negative 20. And it turns out that the determinant of this matrix is negative 20, and I was able to find it really easily by just using some of these row operations and remembering what happens. If I add two rows and put that sum in place of one of these rows, the determinant doesn't change. If I swap two rows, interchange them, we introduce a negative sign. And if I were to multiply, I didn't have to do it in this case, but if I were to have multiplied a row by a constant, then I'd have the factor of that constant in the, in the new determinant. Absolutely great. Divide and conquer. The simplest way to, to do really hard things is to transform it into something really easy. Congratulations. I'll see you soon. Now, if you want to bring the lights down, bring them down, because I have nothing more to say.